Recipes are always simplifications. You need to make decisions on what to keep and what to leave out. For example, are you gonna tell people to mince the garlic or are you gonna call for two cloves of garlic minced? Or are you gonna explicitly tell what the correct motion to knead the dough is? Or are you gonna assume that people would know already? So today, we want to show you 8 cooking habits that for one reason or another, we practically never show on cameras. Habit number 1, wok washing, and we conceptualize it as 3 levels. Level 1, no need to wash. For example, after blanching some stuff like vegetables or toasting some spices, the wok is basically clean and you can use it straight up, or give it a super quick rinse at best. Or you give the meat a quick passing through oil, you can either scoop or wipe out the sediment at the bottom and then use the wok straight up for the stir fry. Then level number two, a rough wash. During cooking, after finishing a stir fry, there may be some sauce stuck on the wok. We usually just give it a quick scrape with the wok chan and rinse it off and use the wok for the next dish. Then level three, the final clean that usually happens at the end of cooking. For example, we finish frying uh, some chicken wings here and what I like to do is wiping off most of the oil with some paper, then start a gentle scrubbing with some detergent on the scouring pad. Make sure I get to all the surface and then rinse it clean. After that, either wipe it dry with a clean towel or heat it up to dry over the stove. As we are on the subject of washing things, might as well move on to habit number two, washing dishes as you go so that the kitchen doesn't turn into a disaster zone at the end. I think most of you will wash your dishes as you cook, but over the years, I've noticed some less than ideal dishwashing practice out there, so let's share how we do it. This is something that my parents burned into my brain when I was a kid. First, give the thing a rinse so that no food is left on it. Then, get a scouring pad, add a bit of detergent and scrub to get foamy. Then, thoroughly scrub every inch of the dish, making sure you get the edges and the bottom, especially the bottom for people who never wash the bottoms. Set the dish aside to give the soap a chance to emulsify with the oil working through the dishes, then rinse. The dishes should be squeaky clean by now, but if you're working with something that's super oily, you may need to give it a hot water rinse at first, and then repeat the washing process one more time. Now, of course, there are lots of ways to do dishes, so let us know what is your personal system. But we did have a question for those out there that use the hot basin method. How do you wash as you go? It feels like it will be really difficult to have your sink occupy all throughout cooking. I'm not saying that it's a bad system, we're just curious about your logistics. Continue on the topic of washing, habit number 3, vegetable washing. I feel like I have to talk about this because when I first met Chris, he did not know how to wash herbs and vegetables. And I feel like I heard this a lot from people who are married to Westerners. In some ways, I get it. In Thailand, you can also get this kind of string wrap vegetables at 7-Eleven, courtesy of everyone's favorite mega corporation CP, which is conveniently owned by Thailand's richest family. And this do look pretty clean, but first, you are not always gonna get this kind of produce, and second, vegetables have pesticides, you should wash them. If they join at the bottom like this, it can be a good idea to snip it off, loosen up the leaves, soak it for 5 to 10 minutes, and the mud in between will come off. Then grab a small bundle, jiggle to wash, align them in the basket so that they don't turn into a twirl of mess. Water your plants with the water, rinse off any mud in the basin, toss the vegetable back, and repeat one or two more times depends on how dirty the vegetable is. And the same method applies to herb as well. Just separate at the bottom, soak, jiggle, and repeat to get rid of mud, bugs, pesticides, and preservatives. Okay, last bit on washing, habit number four, hand washing. I think everyone watching this video washes their hand when they're cooking, but we do want to talk about one question we hear a lot, which is meat handling. Whether it's at our old Dai Pai Dong in Shunde or when we are marinating meat in our own kitchen, often people will be grossed out when they see us handling meat with our hands. And I guess which is why a lot of people on YouTube will use those kind of um, cool bro kitchen gloves. 
First off, you are handling meat, not polonium. Now Red needs to use disposable lab gloves, Wang Gang doesn't. After you handle the meat, I think it goes without saying that you should thoroughly wash your hands. And when you are handling the meat, one small tip is to only do with one of your two hands, clean hand, dirty hand. This way you can still have a touch of maneuverability before you wash your hands. All right, habit number five, aromatics prep. So I like to think we are pretty solid cooks, but we are not professional chefs. What we do well is research and translation, and we do have a lot to share when it comes to recipes, cultural backgrounds. But if you want to learn knife skills, you should watch professional chefs. Uh, Wang Gang has a whole series on it, but today we do think it may be interesting to share how we personally handle garlic, ginger, and pork. So suppose you want to use garlic for stir fry, you usually have three options, uh, crush, slice, or mince. And I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but if lazy, crush. Just cut off the root and smash, remove the peel, done in 10 seconds. And if you want it a little finer, cut it in half and smash it like this. From there, if you want to mince it, give it a few chops in one direction and then a finer mince in the other. For ginger, there is, at least for us Cantonese, a culturally correct way to peel. You slice the amount you want and then you scrape with the knife to peel it. But I've been lazy recently, so I usually just take a hunk and slice off the peel. There's a touch of wastage, but I think it's okay, especially if the ginger is getting a little bit too old and the skin gets a little bit too thick to just peel it off like that. And we don't microplane or anything. Again, if lazy, smash. If you want to mince, you get a smaller, about one centimeter sections, smash those, chop in different directions, done. For pork or really any meat, we do show cutting it on camera, but we'll have quick cuts because we are not fast as chefs and we respect your time. However, what we do not show is this. I think a lot of people may know this already, but if you pop your meat in the freezer, it's going to be a lot easier to slice thinly. This is some pork that's straight from the fridge, while this was in the freezer for 30 minutes and this one was in it for 75. And talking about meat, let's talk about frying oil. We do a lot of passing through oil and deep frying on this channel. And if your kitchen is not set up for that, I get it. This isn't a video to convince you otherwise, but let's show you what we do with our oil. Next to our stove, we usually have a few oils. We have Taizuyo rapeseed oil, a fragrant peanut oil, some salted lard, and this. This is our frying oil pot. We'll usually keep about a liter of neutral oil in there, especially with a round bottom wok. You don't need too much oil usually. Uh, if you're just passing through oil, you only need to keep a couple cups on hand. After frying, we'll let the oil cool down a touch, then strain it into the oil pot. If you have something that's got a very starchy coating, you'll need to give it some time. Let the starch settle to the bottom. You then strain the oil, leave the the oily sludge behind. If you get a lot of coating, you may have a little bit of wastage. It's just what it is, just tie it well in a plastic bag. As for how long the deep frying oil keeps, well, it depends. It depends on uh, what you're frying and how often you are frying with it. For us, we usually change our oil every two to three weeks. You will know it's time to change your oil. When you can smell, it's time to swap your oil. Trust your nose. What we'll do is usually keep the original oil bottle around, pour it in, and then this can just be tossed. Next, I feel like something that's not communicated a lot with stir frying is that you can slow down or even stop when you are stir frying. You don't have to go full blast, full heat, quick motions all the time. Restaurants do because time is money, efficiency is life, and they need to pump all their out quick. For us, like you might notice in our recipes, we like frying minced aromatics over a low flame at first so that it doesn't scorch if we need to do something else. 
then up our flame to high. But something that you don't know is that when we are seasoning, our flame is either low or off because fuming adds a lot of extra time between steps. Or when cooking, you don't always season perfectly at your first try. So you add things in, taste that thing if it needs anything, add that. And you can just do that on a full blast. And lastly, let's talk ventilation. I know one of the bigger cultural arguments in the US right now is over gas stoves. And we are squarely on team NO2 inhaler. But it honestly doesn't matter if it's gas or induction, you should ventilate. In China, almost every apartment comes with a really strong vent that uh, vents into a tube that goes outside of the building. Here in Thailand, the place we're renting has a vent that goes outside the place, but it's not completely up to our standards. So there's also a low-tech solution, which is open the windows, turn on the fan. When we're frying, we do all of the above. So right, those are some of the cooking habits that we don't show on camera. What are some of your favorite cooking habits? Share it and let us learn about it in the comment sections. So right, uh, no recipes this time, but as always, thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. 